few months ago, I made a personal list, the top 10 MS-DOS shareware video. A lot of people were actually surprised by my number one pick, Inner Worlds. A lot of you apparently never heard about it and it turns out there's very little info about this game on the internet. Inner Worlds was developed and published by Sleepless Software and it was their first big game, while also being the last and only one. They originally planned to complete it in one year, but it took them three years to make it and they released it in 1996 for Windows and Linux. Going with the very popular shareware distribution model, the first chapter, Wizard's World, was available for free, while the other two chapters were included in the full registered version. It was apparently decently received, but commercially flopped, later being released as freeware for anyone who can put their hands on the game files. The game starts with a pre-rendered animation of the game's logo hidden in a spooky castle, and then jumps straight into the beginning of the game. There's actually no main menu screen. Even if you want to continue your adventure, you always have to go to the first level screen and then load the game from the menu. You play as Nikita, a female warrior whose quest is to defeat Gralob, a horrible creature created in twisted experiments that has been haunting the wolf people of this world. At least in the first chapter, each one has its own main enemy. And so, welcome to Inner Worlds, as Nikita lands in a dungeon completely weaponless and with no way to defend herself beside Marioing the crap out of spiders. Nikita controls pretty well. She can jump, climb poles, ladders, swing from handholds and wield weapons that you find along your adventure. But Nikita has a special ability, a furry sweat dream, the ability to change into a ferocious wolf. This is where the game gets pretty interesting as playing it as the wolf controls a bit different than Nikki in her human form. As a wolf, she can run faster, jump further, but is unable to climb ladders and such. Also, some places are only accessible as the crouched wolf. At the beginning of the game, it's the only way to defend yourself. You can bite enemies, which does some damage, but you can sacrifice some mana to maul enemies by pressing up an attack while running in the desired direction. And it's delightfully brutal. Changing into the wolf also costs mana, so you might get stuck for a while in the not-so-desired form. Thankfully, it's only temporary as you almost always can backtrack to a mana recharge point. You can also pick up multitudes of different items and levels, spells, potions, upgrades, enchantments, key items. I'm not gonna go through all of them because this video would take forever. Of course, you can carry only 8 item types at once and they only stack up to 9, so inventory management is a thing in this game. At least per level, as every level starts off with you empty-handed, even though in the last level you smacked spiders with a force hammer. I'm okay with this idea, as in each level you approach it individually and you're not a powerhouse of 20 invincibility potions on two legs. The only thing that you keep forever are spells, which you unlock by beating certain bosses, and amulets, which permanently erase your strength, health or mana. These are generally hidden and each level has exactly one of these, so it's beneficial to scrounge around and look for hidden areas. It's beneficial anyways, as you can find extra stuff that might save your ass a few times, or find weapon upgrades. There's quite a choice of weapons actually, hammers, swords, maces, bows, wands that shoot spells, and the deadliest of weapons, rocks. For the most part, melee weapons handle similar, but you can upgrade them with a weapon enchantment spell to have special powers. Sadly, it doesn't work for rocks, which is rather disappointing. And once you unlock spells, you can easily use those when out of ammo or weaponless. The graphically, the game sure is pretty with Nikita's fluid animations, unique level designs and the pseudo 3D effect that some of the levels use. It's all 2D sprites, but it's cast in perspective as you move around, sort of 2.5D-ish. It's actually kinda of cool without being fully 3D. Almost every level feels unique in some kind of way, being the art style, the lightning or the design overall. Each chapter has its main theme going on too, the first world is very medieval themed. Dungeons, castles, caves. The second one is more of an open area, swamps, mountains, forests. The third one is rocks, evil and lava. 
All that is accompanied by awesome high quality sound design starting at the shape shifting echoey wolf howl and ending at the awesome soundtrack. That's one of the main things that got stuck in my head after playing the game for the, for the first time. It has awesome soundtrack ranging from quite the happy adventurous tracks to more dark and grim themes. So yeah, so far so good, nothing to complain, right? Well, that was also my impression after playing the first chapter of this of the shareware version. The only thing I could have thought about the first chapter was that the game felt a little bit too easy with tons of crystal shields in the first levels and the fact that you could just hold invincibility potions and never have to use them. Hell, you could beat the Gralop without actually moving. Easy peasy, no sweat. The problem is that this changes in chapter 2. In the first level of chapter 2 actually, there is an issue. A difficulty spike. A huge one. And I was not prepared for the first time, see, not only second chapter introduces more monsters with each level, all the bosses you defeated previously are now regular enemies. The giant armored spider thing that spits fire? Why not fight four of those throughout a single level? The game suddenly gets more challenging and it took me a while to get used to a different mindset. Now instead of a hoarder, I used quite a lot of my items but still died quite a lot. Even the levels are filled with more hazards like spike pits. Trial and error are the main theme of chapter 2 but it's not completely unfair. It's quite the challenge that I was able to beat. That cannot be said about chapter 3 in which I simply gave the heck up. Chapter 3 made me literally rage quit, so I never actually finished the game. Way too many enemies to kill them effectively and I, I got almost every pendant up to point of chapter 3 so I was almost fully upgraded and still could not manage to beat this. One more thing that added to my frustration, frustration is something I cannot blame the game for. Or at least I'm not sure if it's the game's fault. For some reason, in chapter 2, the game would slow down to her crawl or have a seizure attack with shaking screen, or both at once. I am emulating the game through DOSBox, so that might be an issue with emulating. Who knows? The issue seemed completely random going back to normal game speed and no shakiness after going through a door, or a portal, or just go back to normal like nothing happened. And like I said, I don't like the game as I didn't have the issue, these issues on a physical PC back in the day. But in the end, I still like the game for what it is. A very well put together platformer. Great music, sound and graphics complement great gameplay. Even though it gets very challenging the further you get. 